Hello and welcome to the section on data transformations in Spark. Before you can run a machine learning algorithm on your data, in most cases you need to prepare the data for that algorithm. In this section we will see how to do that in Spark. Precisely, we will learn about the operations supported by data frame as well as machine learning specific feature transformers and selectors available in Spark. Let us start from the operations available on the data frame, which is a part of Spark SQL API. In this video, we will cover a broad range of topics. First of all, we will see what data format Spark machine learning module expects, so that we have a proper motivations for covering this kind of operations on data frame and dataset. Next, we will have a look at the operations that are available in the dataset and data frames. Next, we will have a look at the data representation entities uh, available in Spark that we have not covered yet. These are the row and the vector tabs. This will become necessary when we start actually running this kind of operations available on data frame and dataset. Next, we will have a particular look on the map operation of a dataset. Now, one might think that it is similar to the map available on Scala collections, but in fact, you need to know how to manipulate rows and create a new data frame based on the mapping function from a row to a tuple to be able to work with map efficiently. Finally, we will have a look at how to create vectors, which are the data type that Spark uses to store features for the machine learning models. First of all, let us have a look at some motivation for the transformation methods on data frame and data sets. Uh, the main motivation is that Spark machine learning model expects the data to be formatted in a specific manner. Now, each algorithm has its own requirements to the data set that you will feed it. For example, a linear regression algorithm expects a data frame that contains two columns. First column is features column, and the second column is the labels column. The features is a vector of uh, double values which contains all the input features that uh, you expect the model to, to fit. The labels column represents the number we are trying to predict. And the actual linear regression will use the feature vectors to assemble the matrix of the input features that uh, the model will try to fit and predict the labels. Uh, one way to create such a data frame is precisely by using the mapping operation on an existing data frame. Now, of course, map is not the only operation available on the data set and data frame. And broadly, you can divide this all the operations available on a data set in two categories. First are untyped transformations and the second is typed transformations. The main difference between them is that type transformations take into account the type parameter of the dataset. Now, as you recall, a dataset definition takes a single type parameter that describes the type of the uh, entries that are present in this dataset. Precisely the same way as Scala collections uh, describe their contents via a type parameter. Now, normally, a data frame is a data set with its type parameter set to row. The examples of the typed transformations are the filter, map, flat map, type select, and a lot of other methods that you can have a closer look at via an API. Now, the typed select is something we have not seen in this course, and it basically contains a bit more information about the type of the columns we are working on. So far, we have been working only with the untyped select and untyped columns. Now, the most, most prominent example of an untyped transformation is an untyped select. As we have seen earlier, an, an untyped select only takes the names of the columns and the names of the transformations that we want to run on these columns without any specific information about the type of the data that is stored in these columns. Now let us have a look at some practical applications of this theory. In this video, our goal is to create a data frame formatted 
the way Spark's linear regression algorithm expects. That is, we must create a features column with a vector of double features and the labels column with the values we need to predict. This notebook is common for the entire section 4. By the end of the section, we should produce the data ready to be used in Spark linear regression algorithm. In this video, we will only look at the creation of the data frame as expected by the Spark's linear regression, but we will not look at possible optimizations that we can run on the features. By the end of this section, we will have a look at these more advanced topics too. Well, first of all, let us read the data as we have done in the previous sections. You can do that while the code should be already familiar for you. And next, let us have a look at uh, the examples of how you can use data transformations in Spark. First of all, since this notebook is common to all the section 4, let us uh, have a separate cell with uh, the imports that we will need in this section so that it doesn't get in our way. Also notice that we create this label field uh, value that uh, contains the name of the column that we need to predict so that we do not repeat ours. Now let us see how you can create the two columns we described earlier using the map method. So first of all, the features column will include all the numeric features available to us except from the ID and the label itself because we do not want to use the label that we want to predict in the algorithm that predicts this label. So first step that we need to do is to filter all this numeric field. Now these two lines of code should be familiar to you from the previous section on the statistical functions available in Spark. Here we use the information about the fields and their types that is stored in the schema to extract only the fields of an integer type. Also, as you can see, this partial function includes a condition that the name of the column should not be equal to the name of the label we are trying to predict, and also it should not be ID, because uh, obviously ID doesn't have any relevance to predicting the label. Next, we perform the map on this dataset. Now, as you recall, a data frame is a data set of rows. So we need to supply a function that maps rows to something else. Now, a catch to get here is that we do not create a new data frame by mapping a row to row because of the specifics of how Apache Spark encodes the rows. Instead, what we do is we map a row to a tuple. Now, each entry of the tuple represents a column. After we have a data set of these tuples, we can call to df method or to data frame, where we specify the names of the columns and Spark converts the tuples into rows automatically. So we need to create a tuple from this mapping function that will create the two columns, feature and labels for us. Now, the first entry of this tuple must be a vector of the features that we want to use in our linear regression model. Now, a vector can be created via the native Spark API called vectors. So, vectors has basically two methods that are of interest to us. First is dense method that we are calling here, and uh, the, the other method is sparse method. Now, sparse is more suitable for converting categorical values to sparse vectors where numbers are represented in a one-hot encoding. But here, since we are working with scalar values, we use dense vectors that just store numbers as they are. We need to pass an array of entries to the vector. We need to pass the array of values to vectors.dense and uh, Spark API will create a vector containing all the entries from this array. Now how do we get this entries from the array? What we need to do is we need to extract numeric values from the row by name. We can access these values stored in the row by name 
by calling get as method. Now get as method takes two parameters, one type parameter and one value parameter. The type parameter specifies the type that is stored in this under this name in the row, and the name specifies as the name that identifies the elements that we need to retrieve. Notice that since all our entries are integers, are stored as integers, we need to retrieve them as an integer, but uh, afterwards we, we need to convert them to double because uh, the dance method expects an array of doubles and not integers. And Spark does not uh, perform this conversion by, uh, and Spark does not perform this conversion automatically. And finally, we need to convert this uh, sequence to array because vectors.dance expects an array. So this is the first entry to the tuple, and the next entry to the tuple is uh, just a single column of uh, integers that we need to predict. Now we need to predict the integers stored under the label field, and the label field is the sale price. So we need to predict the number, the value for which the houses were sold. So we can do that uh, here in a different way. Another way to retrieve the values from the row is via get int method that uh, expects an ID of an element in this row. We can get such an ID via field index method. Field index method takes the name of the target field that we are interested in and returns an ID of that field. This way we are able to get a value stored in the target field as an integer. Also, there are methods to get values as doubles, as strings, as and as any other primitive type. Finally, the call to to data frame transforms the data set of tuples to a data set of rows or a data frame. And here you can see an alternative way to display a data frame. It is uh, the method show that is defined on a data frame and it performs a textual visualization of this data frame. So as you can see, this new data frame contains two columns. First is features with uh, a vector of uh, values that will be used during linear regression. And uh, also we have this labels column with uh, the numbers we are trying to predict. 